Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. Today we are going to be looking at multiplayer. That's right, we're going to add some networking to good old Unity and we're going to do that courtesy of a little space app I put together here that allows you to fly around as the NCC1337, uh, the USS no copyright infringement whatsoever. Uh, so I've got the, the basics of it here, a very, very simple sort of um, ship. I've got some manual controls down here that you can use. Um, to steer the ship that was just sort of that I visually know what was going on but you can also use the mouse wheel and if you click on the ship then you can go into a sort of mouse steering mode uh, and yes you can fly around this galaxy but right now things are awfully awfully lonely so we're obviously gonna have to add uh, some other ships to this now um, what all we're gonna do is focus on making it so that we can have two or more players in the same game and they can fly around. There's not going to necessarily be any combat or anything in uh, in this first bit, but we'll see how far we can get. So um, Unity does have built-in networking. I I won't be using it directly, however, because I'm actually a big, big fan, let me open up the uh, the store here, of the, uh, the Photon Unity networking. Uh, oh, I thought I still had it open, but apparently I don't. So if I go into the Unity store and I search for Photon, then you'll see the Photon Unity networking free. It is totally free, this Unity plugin. Uh, they make their money by selling servers, and, and that's a real thing I like about the Photon setup. Uh, they don't pay me anything, I just kind of like them. Um, is that uh, they've got this cloud setup that you can use, so you don't even have to run your own servers or anything like that, and you can get like a 20, 20 user server setup for free. So it's perfect for testing, and then when you decide that uh, you've got money to blow, you can you can spend it whatever way you want. You can go with their cloud, you can get your own server, you can probably reverse engineer their protocol and implement it yourself, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm going to be using. It's pretty similar to the basic uh, network, the basic Unity networking, uh, but basically it's this cloud thing, so I don't have to worry about setting up uh, servers, I don't have to worry about setting up firewalls or anything like that. So you just download, import it, um, and uh, you can import the whole package. I left out their two example files, um, their two demo files, just to, I don't know, keep my project cleaner, but it doesn't make a difference if you pull them all in, it's all the same. So you can see that, that I've got them pulled in over here in the Photon Unity networking uh, folder. Now, once you've done that, you're going to go into your window menu, and you're going to find the Photon Unity networking option. And when you pull that up, uh, it should bring you to this wizard. And if you go into your setup settings, which may load automatically, you'll have the opportunity to put in your app ID. Or if you don't, what it'll do, it'll prompt you to, to just put in your email address, and they will mail you one and get you all set up with an account. Uh, pretty easy peasy. Uh, normally, you wouldn't want to show people what your app ID is. But again, this is just going to be one of the 20 user free things. Um, so it's not a not a real thing I'm just it's just a throwaway for me so once you've done that and you've saved it you are all set to go to start programming so all that does is it tells the photon unity networking plugin uh, what your server ID is so that you know you're in your own sort of isolated server environment and you're not piggybacking on anyone else uh, so that's great so what we need to do now is we need to connect up to this server and make sure that all our networking is working now mostly what I'm going to be doing is um, copying a lot from what the the tutorials on their website is it's, it's a very simple and basic way to get started um, so what we want to do is um, we need to, I, I've got a, an empty script object here. That's, it is what I tend to do a lot is I put my all my sort of manager scripts on one object here. I used to make separate empty game objects for each one, but there's not much point in doing that. So game object, create empty, call it scripts. And then I use one for my GUI as well. It keeps it nicely organized. Um, so I'm going to uh, create a new script um, in here and I'm going to call it, I guess I'll just call it network manager. It really could be anything. Um, but it seems like a good way to start. So we're going to take that, we're going to add it to our scripts empty object, there it is, and we're going to open it up in the editor. If people are curious about how the, the rest of the program works, I can, uh, I'll put a link down below to download the basic scripts, I guess also the finished project, because why not? Um, but there's there's really not a whole lot to talk about. One of the things I'm proudest about is the ship has little blinking lights that are like accurate navigation lights. Yeah, that took, oh, right, stop, 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 stop. I forgot that uh, when I scrolled my mouse, it would uh, start moving the ship. There we go. So yeah, the little navigation lights blink on and off. Is that cute or what? Anyway, moving on. Um, right, our script. So getting connected to the server is really, 
really easy. What we're going to do, you know, normally you'd have a main menu, you'd give people options, are they going to single player, multiplayer, are they going to look for a lobby? In this case, what I'm interested in, especially since I've got a 20 user limit, let's just stick everyone in one big room uh, for now while we get everything working out just fine. So in our start, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the Photon network. Now, the way that they've done it in Photon is you actually don't use mono behavior directly, you use their derived version of it in their package, Photon, not mono behavior. All the normal mono behavior stuff will still be there, but they've added a few extra uh, bells and whistles and overridden a few uh, functions, I think like, um, I think even like uh, coprocesses, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. But anyway, what we want to do is we want to connect to the network. So we can go connect and then we can feed them a bunch of data. Or if we, uh, the thing is because we've used that wizard, there is in the Photon Unity Networking folder, there's a resources uh, subfolder and there's a Photon Server settings which has all your info in terms of what the server is and what your app ID is. So we're going to tell it to use that instead of punching things into our code over here. So we can say connect using settings. And the only thing it requires, well, you can actually use it blank, but it is flagged as obsolete. What it really wants is a game version, some sort of unique identifier. Um, so that when you release a new version of your app, people with the old versions won't be able to sort of connect to it and screw things up and do weird things. Um, so we're just going to call it, uh, we're just going to call it alpha 0.1, right? Very early version, nothing much to go on. And uh, one of the great ideas they have in the online tutorial is why not use on GUI just to keep track of the connection status and then we'll know what's going on. So we're just going to use GUI layout dot label. We're going to use exactly like they have it in the example, photon, uh, photon network actually, dot connection state detail, dot to string. And I think that's all we want. I didn't scrub my parentheses. No, good. So now if I tab back over here, and assuming there's no errors, and there aren't, and I hit play, we should get a status string connected, authenticated, joined lobby. We are now in the lobby of the server. So at this point, what we could do is we could query the server, we could get a listing of rooms, we could join a room, we could create a room. And, and for some games, that's exactly how things work. But for other games, and frankly, I think for some of these games, it's, a, 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 with the exception of matchmaking with friends, it's quite nice to just have it automatically match make you and dump you in a thing. Uh, at the very least, there should be an, a button for that. Um, but for our game, we're going to bypass the GUI because this is such a simple little thing. And we are going to, um, we are going to automatically connect to a room. So we actually don't need an update in here. We might need one later, but for, not for now. So let's clear it out. So there are in the photon.mono behavior, there are a few extra callbacks that didn't exist before. For example, on joined lobby. Right, so we connected, we authenticated, we joined the lobby, and now what? Well, we want to be able to uh, connect to a room. So like I said before, the way we're going to do it is instead of showing a listing, and we could do that really easily, um, there's lots of you know room counts, get room list, uh, all these different sorts of features, uh, but we are just going to use join random. So we could join a room based on a string or a, a room info from the, uh, the list, but we're just going to go join random room and we can feed it. Oh, we can feed it a filter, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to say as is. So now if we start this, we're actually going to get an error. Let me take off the maximize on play here so we can watch the console go on down here. Sorry about the errors. I should have cleaned that up a little bit. So joined lobby and then joined random failed. Client stays on master server. No match found. It did not find any rooms for us to join randomly. And the reason is there are no rooms that exist, but that's okay. What we do first is try to create a room or try to join a room. And then if that fails, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create one at that point. So on photon, now there are two versions of this. There's on photon join failed and on photon random join failed, which is what we're gonna use here. And basically if we have failed to do that, there are no rooms that exist yet we are going to create a room. And when we create a room, we can do a few things. We can add a, a name for the room. We can say if it's visible or not, if it's open to the public or not, the maximum number of players, um, and, and additional properties as well, which we can use in our filtering later on for when we display people a list of games or we want to join a random room and we want to do it based on certain parameters. But in this case, uh, we don't need any of that. In fact, we don't even need a room name. We can actually leave it blank. This is totally valid. 
just going to leave it like that because no, none of our players are, are ever going to see the room name because everyone is going to join the same random room. There is a possibility that someone will try to join the ran two people will try to join a random room at once, both fail, and both will create a room, and then you will have two rooms on your server. It's not the end of the world, um, but just note that you know that is definitely a little possibility um, here because of how some of the timings may work out, but that's not going to be a big concern for, for us here. And of course, in the real world, when you deploy a, a real game, um, you know, barring MMOs, which is kind of a separate situation altogether. In practice, the maximum room size will, should be much less than the maximum number of connections you can have to a server. You might be able to support 10,000 users at a time, but have a maximum of 32 players in any one room, in any one game. Um, and so then it's not the end of the world if two people end up creating the game, two rooms at the same time. They'll just both end up filling up, and, and that's fine. So... Um, at this point, we should be able to tap back to our app. We should be able to hit play. Now, we'll still get an error down here in the console when it tries to join the game and then fail, but then it goes right into the next status. We saw some more messages going by here, and we are now joined. We are currently in a room now, um, and we can start transmitting and sharing data. So, oh, I just realized, did I? Oops, let me undo this. I actually got a little bit ahead of myself um, before I realized, hey, I want to make this a tutorial. So I actually had to undo a few things uh, to backtrack to the state where I was. Okay, so now we have created a room, which is great. What does that mean? Well, what I could do, if we wanted to test it, I would actually have to go into, uh, into my build settings the first time, just double check. Yeah, and I could build and run this one level and then I could have two things two people connected to the same room however there's no data being shared back and forth right now so there wouldn't be anything um, actually that's not true there would be there would be an instance of the ship in both worlds because that's currently part of my my scene uh, which is not actually what I want so actually I'm going to take this opportunity I'm going to make sure that all my changes have been applied uh, to my my prefab and I'm going to delete ship one now, ship one exists in my resources folder, and then I have a ship one subfolder just to keep things organized. But here's the actual prefab for ship one. Now, it's very important that it's in the resources folder because that allows us to instantiate objects based on their name. Um, and it is, it is required for how Photon works. Um, there's a few other things that it means about it. I believe it means these will be standalone files. It'll be easier to customize and track going forward. There's lots of sort of unity-isms with the resources folder. Uh, but the big thing for us is it will allow us to, to be able to instantiate objects across the network in, in a perfectly fine way. Um, yeah, so GUI, that broke that, which is fine. The camera broke that, which is fine. So both the GUI and the main camera re require, based on the way I've got my script set up, to know what my player's ship is because they want to be able to track the player. And my GUI needs to know, well, when you click the various buttons or when you interact with the mouse, it needs to know which ship to feed those directions to. I've isolated that out. The ship itself has no idea about whether it's being controlled by a player or anything like that. It has a ship movement controller. And what you can do is you can set things on it and say, well, here's what your, your impulse speed should be. Here's what our, our turn rate is currently. And you set those based on the inputs from the GUI. Or if you've got an AI, an AI script will, will manage those. Um, but the ship itself doesn't really know that. And that's good because that's all the information we're going to propagate over the network is going to be what this, uh, the only thing the ship knows about it, which is where I am now. And I guess the velocity because we might do some, some predictive stuff. Um, all right, moving on. So, all right, right now, We've gone back to just an empty world. In fact, I might be getting errors because, yeah, the, the GUI is, is freaking out because it's got nothing going on. Um, so that's okay. In fact, what I should do, well, there's a couple of things I should do. I, I need to clean up some stuff in the GUI code because we're getting these errors. And maybe I'll go ahead and clean that up now. So because when I put this together quite naively, there we go, my navigation console, uh, I assumed that I would have a ship all the time, which is not true. So if ship movement is null, we're going to return out of this right away on my update, and I'll do the same thing in my in my GUI right here. I think that's all I need to do to eliminate those errors. Let's find out. Yes, indeed. OK, good. Um, and the camera script is already set up to ignore if there's no target. So that's good. So now what we want to do, when we join a game, we want the game to spawn a vessel for us. OK, easy enough. 
we go back into our editor here. We go back into our network manager. Um, so we are creating a room here. We need another. We need another callback handler on joined room. So once we have successfully joined a room, whether we have created it or not, whether it was a random join or not, this should always be called. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new game object. Uh, we're gonna, we'll call it my ship, and it's photon. We're going to use photon network to instantiate our object. We're not going to instantiate it using the regular instantiate command because what this will do is this will automatically uh, propagate the fact that this new object has been created across everyone who's connected in the game. If we were just to instantiate something by default, it would only appear on our local machine. Now, that is still fine for, for certain things. For example, um, if, uh, if we destroy a vessel and that creates an explosion, um, we can we can do this instantiate this way, uh, but my explosions often have multiple sort of steps to them. So, for example, if we destroy a ship, uh, the ship might break, break apart into, compo uh, into components, and then those subcomponents would then further explode and create more debris. Well, the first instantiation could be this network instantiation, because it tells everyone, okay, create an exploded version of the ship here. But then as the explosion progresses and creates more and more little bits of debris and whatever, those can just be handled on the local machine as standard instantiations. There's no reason to do any network noise at that point, because if it's not something that affects the, um, the sort of game rules, there's not really a need to put it all over the network as long as everyone knows how to sort of create it independently. In fact, I probably wouldn't do a uh, local instantiation or a network instantiation of explosion in the first place. Instead, what I would do is simply send out a command that says, by the way, this one ship died. And then on the local machines, they can instantiate a non-network version of, okay, the ship has died, so we'll remove it from the game, but also that we're going to we're gonna inch, we're gonna instantiate a local explosion that's not networked. And then we could do some extra logic, like uh, this is a big, you know, this is going to be a big uh, sort of galaxy, maybe, um, only in, that will only instantiate the stuff if we're close enough to actually see it. If the explosion is going to be too far away that my player can't see it, I'm not going to bother creating an explosion for it. I'm just going to save myself the overhead. And, and that's the sort of thing that we can do when we're not, you know, kind of globally sending out a network instantiation. Anyway, so at this point, we've, uh, we can instantiate something based on the prefab name because we've got it in a resource folder. Uh, and then we've got to say where to create it. And for this purpose, I'm going to create it in the center of the game world. Uh, like that, and identity, right? But what, we'll, what we may want to do is we may want to, for example, predefine some empty game objects scattered across the world and tag them um, as being a player spawn locations, right? Give them that tag. And then here what we do is get a list of all the player spawn locations, grab one at random, and spawn the player there. Right, that would be a great way to sort of spread people out around the world. Um, or maybe we don't have predefined spawn locations. Maybe instead of p setting people exactly at zero, we uh, we could do something like, and this would be very easy. We can go uh, random dot um, probably on unit sphere for this. That's what I'm thinking. This would be on the shell of a sphere of a unit of a radius one, um, and then. So somewhere on the outside of a sphere is this where it would spawn us. And if we wanted a little bit more space between people, we could you know, do something like that. So from the origin of the game, you're going to be spawned five units away in a totally random direction. Uh, and that way you don't have to worry too much about collisions. I'm not going to do that here because right now I actually want people to spawn right on top of each one another so that I can actually kind of see them pretty easily. Um, good. So that's all we need to do here. Now I'm saving it here. I'm not going to do anything with this quite yet. Yeah, but I'll be right back with that. So now if I hit play, instantiate takes three arguments. No overload for instantiate takes three arguments. Really? Do we not need a rotation? Oh, we need to, we need to, there's another parameter. So if we do this, yes, group is needed. Um, we're just going to set that to zero. But that can help. I believe the groups we can use to help um, isolate our, our objects so that only people in groups will get the, the messages. Um, it can do th it helps you do things like uh, split people up by zone, uh, reducing network overhead, and that sort of thing. But we'll just leave it at zero for now. So that should be sufficient. 
Mm -hmm. That's fine. Lots of warnings because, again, we're not using a lot of things. And if I hit play, now as soon as we connect, there should be, there's not. Oh, not a subfolder. Really? Hmm. I did not know that. So, the resources is picked up, but not ship one in a subfolder. So what I really almost want to do, let me rename my structure a little bit here. Well, this is good to know. Ships. What do I have? Is it because I have something open? Let me close some of this. Let me close off Blender. Let me close off Photoshop. No. There we go. All right, so something was just open. All right, so I've renamed that folder ships, and I'm going to rename this subfolder as scripts. So basically now, under assets, oh, it may have been uh, may have been Dropbox interfering with things as well. That happens a lot. Under assets, I have a folder for my ships. Inside, I have a generic scripts folder. And then what I'm going to do is create a new, so in ship one, in here I've got materials, meshes, and then I'm going to create a folder in here called resources. And this is fine. You can have these resource folders nested in there. And I'm going to put the ship in there. And I think that will work. I may be lying to you. Or who will find out? It has no photon view attached to the root. OK, so now we've got a different message. And that's fine. So let's go back over here and look at our prefab. So what